Hello, welcome to Happy Bee Art Studio. Today, I'm doing a simple little watercolor painting, and we're just gonna be using a few colors, too. Um, I don't think I have these swatched out yet, but um, I'm using, I believe, the Holbein watercolor, and, but you can use a Shinhan or, the, uh, or Cotman, or really anything you have. So, um, let's get started. I've got, oh, uh, first brushes. So obviously don't worry about having the exact same supplies as me. It's not really that important. But uh, I'm using a number, uh, number 14 round, a number eight round, a number five round, and a number two round. So, um, just got various types here as you can see um i recommend getting a synthetic sable if you can um synthetic squirrels are nice too but they hold a little too much water sometimes and can get your paper a little too wet which can actually be quite annoying at times so i've got 12 colors um just a decent spectrum with a few earth tones and um some white gouache just in case we need it a um a basic mixing palette here if you have um, just an old ceramic plate, like a dinner plate, use that. That'll work just fine. If you have some old di dinner plates and things, yeah, those will work great, too. Actually, just make sure your mixing palette is white. Really, that is the biggest thing. So, the first thing we do is we get a pencil. And keep an eraser around in case you need this. Also, a sponge is not required, but could be useful. Sponges can be used to wet areas, but wet them very lightly. So, I I'm actually have a block of paper, but I'm kind of, um, and I'll explain what I'm doing with that. But this is just a, um, a painting that I did earlier that is flapping about. I never finished this. That's why it looks a little plain, but I will eventually finish that. And post that on our uh, Facebook page. It's uh, called Happy Bee Art. Um, if you haven't seen it already. All right, all right. So what we're gonna start with is I'm just gonna mark some water down here. So go ahead and make some water. And we're gonna, we can just kind of make our lines out. I generally make like dashed lines because they don't show up very much. You could also use water soluble graphite, which I think I've got that somewhere. Water soluble um, pencils are really nice because they're. Uh... Oh, can you see that? I don't think. Oh, uh, not very well. Here, I'll I'll darken it up, but make it very light and try to dash it still. And like here, I'm. Can you see that now? Um, yeah, you should be able to see that. All right, now. Now, like in all my artwork, I have to have mountains. Hold the pencil sideways and just jet, and just kind of move it like that. Create some rude jagged edges. If you don't like some edges, you get just go back and uh, redo it and re erase the old ones. Really, it's all about using, get, creating random elements with your pencil while, and then just making sure, but making sure it looks right. Not too random, you know? You have to make it look natural. gonna be a little hill here so we can and then we can always have some little evergreen trees because I always find myself doing a lot of evergreen trees probably because they're fun and easy to paint and fit in just about every landscape Now here we can have some like cattails. We're gonna make them real small because they're far away. We 
can have some up close ones to fill in this corner. Cattails often grow in swampy areas. They're really easy and good addition. They're a really easy and great addition to um, lake sands. And then just add a sense of uh, depth, right? By kind of adding these, making them smaller as you get on in the, um, make it feel random too. You don't want them all doing the same thing. See, so if we kind of trim off the tops, see, so you can tell they're getting farther away. Those are really far away and these are extremely close. So we've got most of our landscape planned. Um, and then if we wanna add any special things in it, well, we can pick out now, um, like maybe we want to add a few small, really, a few, we want to make a big, big distant tree, bigger trees, make a few distant trees back here. So we just use lines to represent trees, um, and we'll just paint over that later. So the first thing we really want to do is get our sky. Is um, either get our sky or our foreground done. Those are really the two things to do first. And I'm gonna do the foreground. And now I'm using, I believe, a fluid easy block. Um, what size was it? A four by six inches because um, just because that was cheap and I wasn't, tr I was just trying out the paper. I actually haven't really used this paper much, but um, it's a good way to test it. Now, you could also wet the um, paper with a sponge to get it wetted more evenly. Use a wet sponge and that'll get it really even. I'm just using the brush because this brush is quite good for wetting large areas. It's a synthetic sable round 14. Oh. This is um, some sort of brush from Korea, South Korea or somewhere, but it's a very nice brush, actually. I do use it a lot now. Um, we can just get a little permanent green. Need a little more than that. Get it not super thick, but enough. Show. Now, this doesn't seem natural. That's fine. We're going to kind of get some green in them. Right? Just to show. Get, just to get a little grass in this. Grass in this in there. Under cattails, we want it to be dark. What color would be darker? Why don't we make that? Now, that's kind of unnatural. That looks like we painted it with something. A really bright green, which is what actually we did. So. Um, now we'll have to um, fix that, but it's not fixing something bad. We're layering on top of something that doesn't look right on its own. So don't skip straight on to the next part without adding this green. It is very useful and important that you add it because there will be shadows and we need to first, this color is sap green. I'm sorry, do heard some dogs barking in our neighborhood, it sounds like. Um, and then we just kind of get it along the darkest parts of the darkest sap green down there. Now we can just kind of lightly blend it. Add some more where we like, and just add some more. Here, maybe there's something having it. And we want some rough texture now. We need some texture. And we want to have varying tones. And by kind of hitting the brush on the paper like this, we can 
add some texture to it. Get a little bit more sap green, just put it lightly on the top. I'm doing this all with my round 14 on four by six paper. A big brush really isn't that hard as long as you have to use as long as you have a good big brush. That's really the trick. Because a good big brush is better than a whole bunch of not very good little brushes. So I definitely recommend that you get a very uh, a big brush before anything else really because you can use it for very fine spaces if you buy a round. And round brushes are really great because you can use them for very fine areas and very large areas. Alright, that looks like a good enough green for now. I think we're going to need to let that dry before we can add any more details on that. Now we can get a little cobalt blue hue. With a lot of water in it, just to get it real light. A cerulean or a blue or a hue or a manganese blue hue would do great too. Now we do want to take a dark, darker color, a darker tone of it, just by adding, you just get darker by adding less water and gently See, so now we have a little bit of, a little sense of movement in the water. Now, we can get, do a little mixing on the palette finally, because I don't have any grays or anything. We can take our round eight, get a little ultramarine blue, mix with burnt sienna, ultramarine and keep mixing it until you get a bluish gray just like that just like that and we're the and we're the pine trees and things get taller we have to make we make our shadows go a little fur so there you go just a very basic like outline sort of of the trees on the as our shadow because we really don't want to go through a lot of effort to make shadows because sure you can paint the painting and then paint it upside down then flip it over again but it's not worth it to paint your painting twice so you really just want to add a little painting and you don't want to paint like for five hours just to make shadows and reflections so that's really, we're just trying to make this quickly and easily to add more detail later. Cause that's my technique. To start with a low detail landscape that's more a little abstract. We can let the water and the grass kind of bleed into the mountainscape here. That's all right. That'll just make it a little more unique, have more texture, so we really don't need to stress about that at all. So yeah, that looks just as if you I use a very watered down Payne's Gray or Shadow Violet or something of that sort. So really, it's not worth having that. It's usually not worth having to, a ton of colors, honestly, because you can just mix some simple ones to make. If you basically get good colors for mixing, you've got a huge palette as long as you're willing to mix a few colors, which usually 
um, sometimes I am in a hurry and don't want, feel like mixing colors, which is why I have some bigger palettes, but a small palette, which um, can actually really help you be more creative because you have a slightly more limited palette to work with and it's um, a little less overwhelming. So it's actually can be good for you sometimes to use a smaller palette, even if you have a bigger palette. Now, I'll switch back to round 14. I generally use my 14 a lot in my first section. And now, get some oh, blue in that. Oh, I'm forgetting something. We should get it wet. Very wet. Just a slight hint of blue, maybe. And yet, see? And yet, we're just wetting the page on the top. Now, just get the sky. Now, you don't have to wet the whole thing perfectly because we're going to want clouds and things, which, in the sky, because cloudless skies happen, but don't look right in paintings. So, like, that's what we're going to do. And now, we're just going to, not going to make it cloudless now. If you miss some water, take a, if you miss some spots that you do want to have, want to have water in, you can take a smaller brush and uh, fill them in. It's like a round eight. Now, I'm sure for round eight will become, will seem real big soon for some of the details we're doing, but later, but we're just basically making a simple landscape first. So really, you don't have to go very far with this and do it that, do the whole thing, but it definitely, definitely if you don't want to add deta the details. All right, now we can just let the paint go down. Just kind of put the paint in randomly. And then let it go down a bit. And then help it blend. And then just blend it a little more. Just blend it a little more, make it seem a little more natural. And then you've got a instant sky. See? You just, once you wet it, I'm get, you already, now you know formula for an instant watercolor sky. You wet the paper, but not all of it, and then you, and then you just put some paint at the top, and then tilt it, and then basically, you've got an instant watercolor sky. You just have to give it a little time to um, move and just make sure you've got it how you like it, because, I mean, sometimes you're, you're because with the technique, you're probably not going to get everything exactly how you want it at first. So it's going to need a little work. But this, but tilting it is a good way to kind of get the paint moving on its own in the direction you want it to. But it's going to look a little unnatural and bloomy. So you get to, and now we've got some hard edge, edges, which I think look, look actually quite good. And there, so, um, now we're just going to wait on that. And finish you know that sort of looks like um the state of kentucky maybe that cloud and you know if you see something like that where it looks like it could look like any state really um florida or something and if you get it looking like a state or an animal or something you just let it do that it's fine because it really just actually makes it look more natural because natural things like that occur in the sky it's just another neat thing to notice that makes the painting seem more uh, natural. Because, really, if you look up into the sky, you find a lot of clouds that are s shaped like states or something. Or, really, you can find them that are sh shaped like almost anything. Like, you even sh see a cloud shaped like... A tornado that's not really a tornado it's crazy so really it's not gonna, a bad thing to have crazy shapes and things and that doesn't really look like that much anything that much so like I'd say that looks fine and just go with it just go with it okay just get burnt umber just a little bit very watery
burnt ember. Well, that's a little strange because burnt ember is quite a common color, but I wouldn't. It's not your fault if you don't have it. Maybe you just don't like the way it looks. That's fine. You could use um, burnt sienna with a little gray or some of some a little of that gray we mixed earlier, and um, and or some uh, sepia would work nicely as well. So really, just work with what you have. Is all I'm saying. So we put our horizon line up really high. Generally, you don't want to. Um, the horizon line would be where the sky meets the rest of the landscape, and you don't want it um, to be um, in the middle. Because from what, most of the time, you don't want it to be in the middle because then you you don't know then the eye the viewer won't know where to look. If you have it, you basically need, if the view is mainly your sky, you're probably going to want a, um, a low horizon, which in that case would be like down here, the horizon line. If you wanted it to be obviously less sky, and more of a landscape, you put it up here. Usually you want it slightly above or slightly below the center of the page. The center would be about here on mine. All right. gonna take it a few minutes to dry so because I hate waiting for paint to dry it's like watching paint dry well, probably because it's drying and you're watching it and it's paint so I guess you are watching paint dry so I guess that's why it's like that um, anyway what we do is we just wait a little bit for it to dry well and meanwhile we can get some other work done on here because I because I don't like wasting time while I'm painting and I don't like editing YouTube videos I try to avoid um, sitting around and waiting for my paint to dry when I'm making videos so I don't like waiting for paint to dry and I also don't like spending an hour editing my YouTube videos so Oh, sorry about that. I hear a weird sound. That's the dog. She came down here while I was getting set up. Something must have scared her. Dogs usually come down here. One of the dogs often come down here when they're scared. green and mix up some gray and then some burnt sienna because burnt sienna I often don't use it for things but I do often use it for um, mixing and then add ultramarine you'll get a slightly darker green so the original sap green the well, mountains are, should be still just slightly damp if they're not you can re-wet them and you don't even have to re-wet them at all so yeah so basically just taking the brush out and reaching like that now i don't like that's a technique that i've seen but i'm not a big fan of it myself that's why i clump my trees closely because it's kind of an easy way to get a pine tree texture but not have the uh, but i'm not a fan of it so i'm just kind of like you can just swipe or you can do that now we need a bit more of a water line I'd say now just get regular sap grain I'm using a round two by the way to go up with them a little above them and get a slight now we're gonna slightly damp slightly damp round five you can make this work by the way with like around 12 just a 12 or something 
Like, I painted with just a tin for a long time. Now, hard edges aren't bad. We've got to keep in mind that, that they actually do make our painting look a little more natural. Okay, so our sky is dry. And that means we can do a little more work on that. Just to, um, just to soften it up, we can take a brush, like my round five here, and scrub it. Now you probably want to use different, you might want to use different brushes if you're using um, different size paper. So just remember that. I like smaller paper myself, but you might not, so. If you, if you want a smaller paper, yeah, go ahead and use it. Or bigger paper, not smaller. I mean, you could feasibly do this on a smaller paper, but you need really little brushes and it would probably be more work than it's, more effort than it's worth. We're just kind of softening the lines, making our sky feel more natural, but you need to keep a little bit of a hardness. See, just a few hard lines, and we're gonna let that dry, and that should, give us a slightly more natural sky. Now, just while we make sure our pine tree is dry, the way I'm doing, your thing about doing your landscape, one of the most important things to learn is um, just to do it, organize efficiently, and so you don't have to sit and wait for it to dry. Because I've done, I've followed several tutorials where you just have to sit and wait for it to dry constantly. And most of your time is actually spent waiting for it to dry. So that's why it's, it is critical if you want to get your paintings done quickly that you, um, can't think of a word. Um, well... Basically that you um, just organize efficiently and try to get it so you're doing things in the right order. Like if you do the lake and then the sky, if you do the lake and then you do the sky while the lake dries and then you work on the lake some more while the sky dries, so you work on the sky again, that's organizing well because then you're not waiting as much, you're not waiting for things to dry. You're doing something else while things dry. So now get a um, light green mix. A little bit of permanent green. With a little bit of sap green. Sap green. To get a nice lighter green. And then we take that. A bit of white gouache. White gouache. And then add more uh, sap green. Blue like gouache everywhere. And a little more sap green. There we go. So, it looks like this that I'm stirring around. And when we added the gouache, that made it more opaque. So, we can easily... Now, we're going to want to cover up these lines I made with the um, pencil fairy. You already made us I apologize for that, um, that, whatever happened, um, I believe my phone ran out of storage and we got that, I got that sub settled, so I've got, um, more space on my phone now, and we can continue. you. Now, after I did the grass, I just put some little grass here, very small in the distance, and then, um, put, and did a little more of that same color on the trees. So, um, oh my, I left a paint brush in the water. Don't do that. That'll mess up the brush. And uh, I'll give it a, so yeah, you can just do that. And now while it dries, we're gonna take some green and add that, some, the green we mixed earlier and add vermilion hue to it. So 
sort of looks like burnt sienna, so we're gonna add all terrain. Burnt sienna a little bit. Burnt sienna. And that looks alright. Now at the top we can kind of You can let those blend together. Now, I'm, mine here is these are dry, so that's my big problem with them. Those messing with each other, and then you can kind of, since most of the paint's dry, it's not too hard to avoid it if it touches a little. It's not like it's going to go all over the place. Then we can just blend that color up the top down. We really don't want anything um, harsh, just a smooth transition. Down, transition down. In most of my landscapes, um, I'm, I do keep perspective out, though I think we've got, it feels a little flat, so we might want to try to add a row of trees coming back here, or something, I don't know. I think I just want to leave it at this, mostly, and just improve this to make it feel a little less flat. That's what I'm intending to do. Can add more of that color in here to just kind of cover some things up and make it feel a little. Uh, can I use burnt umber? Can I use burnt umber? No. Just kind of add some in. We don't know how many vine trees. We don't know how many trees there are in here, you know? more work to do in the foreground actually so get the big brush uh, number 14 we're almost done i think we're almost done i think and then uh some of it we can get a whole side of a brush very thick and just glaze over moving that to that side slowly and even if you want to you could turn the painting over and go like that if that feels more natural to you I really don't mind doing it, however, either way seems to feel alright to me. Now we can get the small around too. We'll burn umber on it and kind of put in some 
make real cat, make some real cat tails. Now they're unmistakably cattails, and we can just do that on the rest. Just make sure to make it a little thing smaller. Now with this one, we've actually got to kind of go along here and just Just literally use a tip of a brush and just just tap, just tap, tap with the top of a brush. So you see, we have cattails, and that's kind of showing, just showing how we have some depth in this painting, and that's where we get our main sense of depth, which it don't, it mainly relies on those cattails because we have something that really does shrink and go in the background. Otherwise, I think it would feel quite flat. You've gotta make sure you have something like that on in your painting. Eh, got a dog hair on my paint. On my paint. Um, something like that. It really carries it through and show it was some depth and dimension to it. Because otherwise you're, if you've got some, a big dot of water, you can actually, here, you can use that to your advantage and kind of blend that down with your little brush and that will make some weird rough patches. Now you have this dark, nice dark that we've got left over here from when we did our last mix. And just add on the mountains and some. Parts down low actually this time. And we take it and there we go. So we've got quite a bit of detail building up here, but I do think I want more because it still feels a little flat. The real thing about making a landscape is it's often going to look flat at the beginning, but you have to make sure that it doesn't look flat when you're done. Just add a few foreground trees now that just look like this. Green. Really define those shapes so we can easily see there's our big tall evergreen trees. When you got bubbles, you can just kind of blow on them and they'll often disperse or just. Pop them with the tip of your paintbrush as long as you're very careful. I'm gonna add a bit more on top of that big grassy hill because it's not like this. You've got not to not overwork it, but you've also got to. Make sure you get exactly the right tone and it feels layered and dimension. No, because we really got to make it.
bunch of little pieces of paint. Now it's time we really do have to let this dry before we do much else. Then we can figure out our finishing touches we want to add. And while it dries, if you do see a spot that needs a little more shadows, just uh, just shadow it. You know what to do. You probably you know what to do, I think. Just kind of put some paint down. Try it uh, slightly darker, but try just kind of just kind of bit just kind of put some paint down and mess with it until you get it right. That really is a lot of it. Just putting paint down and messing with it until you get it right and find a technique that works for you. It's feels more like less like a grassy hill and just a grassy plain elevated slightly like that. Hmm. If it looks slightly different than you intended, that's fine. As long as it looks like part of a natural landscape and really that doesn't even matter as long as you have fun that's really what matters and I mean I don't think it's impossible I don't think it's possible to ever make something truly perfect but you can make something really good but you do have to practice so practice makes very good not perfect think you can ever get perfect at least maybe for you but I think everyone's gonna have a different style and thing they like so really it's up to you how you like to paint and just just practice the more you practice the more you learn even if you make a bad painting honestly making a bad painting and and figuring out what went wrong is one of the best ways to learn to paint better. Taking some white gouache now. In really tall mountains, I'm putting a tiny bit of white gouache. Little bit so uh earlier the cat stepped in some of white this white gouache and uh ran all over the house while we were trying to catch her to uh wash her feet and they um and the gouache sort of got all over our floor thankfully it's water soluble um which is why you can dry it in a palette and reactivate it for use later on um but yeah the which is why, but that's, but yeah, it's, it was just a huge mess, and we were all doing different, all going, all, all run, either running after the cat, or getting rags, or wiping up paint, and so I guess the moral of the story is, don't let your cats get into paint. Make sure the phone hasn't ran out of storage oh, again. Okay, okay, we still got time, plenty of time. All right, cool, cool. Um, I'd say it's about done. Maybe if we get a little light gouache. Just real light, right? Just play where I'm just using round two for this. We can sort of add this and, and add a few clouds. Wispy, heavier ones. Not wispy and light, but like heavier ones, you know? Just see a more prominent closer clouds because honestly I think that's the thing a lot of that that is really easy to not think about your clouds because it's kind of like you make your clouds you're done it feels like for some people but now you may just think the clouds are just a place are just to make the sky not feel so empty but I think adding good clouds is actually nice clouds can be quite important 
because to make the sky feel uh, very unique and different because we got the sky from before but we can add to it really a lot and break up shapes that feel unnatural to us by using white gouache just to fill in some space and make extra clouds so I'm going to get it so you can see it. Here is today's painting. Yeah, we can just find a pin and sign it. Really, around here, finding the pin is the hard part. And finding a dry place of a painting. See? There you go. All right. There we go. And our painting is finished. I hope you enjoyed painting with us today. Um, please like and subscribe. And uh, that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye.